I want to bring now into the conversation Andrea Mitchell, NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent, the host of Andrea Mitchell Reports here on MSNBC. Andrea, thank you for being with us tonight. I know it's a busy thank night you. for you. Um, I want to ask you about the president's um, remarks toward Pakistan tonight. Those yeah. are the things that struck me as a change in American international relations in the sense that the president insulted Pakistan to my, to my ear when he said that Pakistan needs to demonstrate that it is committed to civilization order and peace, telling a country that they're not committed to civilization is essentially calling them barbarians. I, don't, I doubt that that will be well received. And then he immediately followed it by saying, and we would like more direct involvement in Afghanistan from India, which of course will raise hackles in the Pakistani government because of the fraught relationship between those two countries. It, it, that seems to me like the biggest change diplomatically in an international relations tonight. Can I ask your reaction to that? Yeah, absolutely. That's what leaped out at me because uh, American diplomats and presidents have made a, a pact, really, for decades. You don't go to Pakistan without also going to India. It's been this even-handed approach. You've got two nuclear-armed states. They have fought so many wars between them. And the fact is, this is a direct insult to Pakistan, which, uh, frankly, deserves the insult because they protect and shelter the Haqqani network. But with by bringing First, by, first of all, laying Pakistan, the responsibility on Pakistan to do something about their terrorism. It's not usually done this openly. And by bringing India into it, it is such an insult, it's such a provocation that I can't see what the incentive would be for Pakistan to take any action. Uh, they now have their pride and their authority, their nationhood, challenged by the president. So it is a, it is a strange way to try to expand the strategy to include all of of South Asia. And, and in terms of the, the U.S. government and its orientation on these issues, um, I mean, the president didn't appoint a, a random crony or fundraiser to be ambassador to Pakistan. There's a career foreign service person who has been named as the ambassador to Pakistan. That seems like a, a gesture towards stability, at least in that relationship. That said, he dissolved the special representative for Afghan, Afghanistan and Pakistan, which is a, an envoy, sort of a super envoy position right. uh, that existed throughout the Obama administration. And then we've seen such major changes at the, at the State Department, including not staffing up even the senior ranks of that, uh, of that agency. Uh, how will, how, if, if a new big fight with a nuclear power has just been picked by the president, how is that going to be staffed and handled by this administration? Well, it isn't staffed and it isn't handled. You've got uh, just a handful of people in position uh, not really uh, able to cope with this kind of thing. The, the fact is also that when he says no more nation building, Rachel, there has been a positive effect uh, from what both Presidents Bush and Obama did. Now, a lot of that has gone down the, the drain in the last couple of years as the Taliban has reclaimed territory. There's no question that we are losing, that we're not just in stalemate, that the, the good guys are actually falling behind, and that there is corruption in Kabul. Uh, in the past, you did hear this against Karzai, but you had not heard it against this government in Kabul. So that is also uh, picking at a sore. But I don't see what the change is, other than the, what Courtney said. He, he deliberately gave Mattis, Nicholson, and the other generals the ability to decide on future deployments Mattis, I think, very smartly did not accept it by delaying this until there was a review and getting the president's buy-in. I think the biggest change may be that they have persuaded over these many meetings and many arguments to get the president to go against his own grain, to go against his instincts, to against, go against Steve Bannon, if you will, and to make a decision that is more in line with what his generals believe necessary, which is not a complete withdrawal, and certainly not hiring Eric Prince for $10 billion a year uh, to bring his mercenaries in and turn it over to the private sector. So that is where his head was and his heart. And they have now reeled him in, and he is now going along with Nicholson, whom he publicly criticized, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and Mattis, and H.R. McMaster, uh, and, of course, John Kelly, for whom Afghanistan uh, is such a, uh, an emotional challenge, given the fact that he lost his son after the Obama increase to 30,000 troops, and that he is another Marine son uh, hmm. either deploying or about to be deployed. Yeah, that, that human connection for some of the key decision makers here is absolutely, yeah. uh, absolutely key. Andrea Mitchell, NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent. Pleasure yeah. and an honor to have you here with us tonight, Andrea. Thank you so Where's much. Mine?
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.